What is going on everyone? Welcome into a much anticipated video. Just following up my 2022 NFL draft grades videos. We're going to go back in the time machine a little bit. We're going to take a look at my 2020 NFL draft grades. I like to give these things two years to breathe. And even then we haven't seen all of these guys get their full opportunities, but will be a really fun video. And I don't think the timing could be any better fresh coming off eight draft grades videos from the most recent draft get to go back see where i was right where i was wrong apologize for where i was wrong maybe pat myself on the back a little bit for some good takes and beyond that this is a fun exercise to kind of learn about you know some some stuff why i missed on some guys uh just kind of a little self-evaluation process in, in some ways as well you know i think i've come a long way <laughs> in two years since we did these draft grades so let's get into it this is probably going to be a really long video so please do hit that like button down below um, but let's have some fun starting we're just going to go in order of when i posted them the chicago bears i gave this draft sorry i gotta find it here i gave this draft a b and i did not like the cole Komet pick i just thought it was too early for him i thought he'd be a decent player that actually turned out to be pretty good criticism there i don't think he was worth that pick loved jalen johnson thought they found a starting corner he's a good corner for them right now thought gibson would develop kendall vilder might start in the slot really like darnell mooney i mean i kind of nailed the bears draft here off the bat didn't see much in these guys so um i think this analysis was pretty good right out the gate so good job there on da bears then we got detroit coming up i gave this draft an a minus and Jeff Akuda at the, this point in time, I was kind of afraid of, because I was really hard on the Browns for taking Denzel Ward at this point in time. And this draft pick reminded me a lot of Denzel Ward, even though I didn't like Akuda as much as Denzel Ward. So I think I've come back around to be a little, you know, stick my ground a little bit. I deep down didn't love this pick, but of course I graded it an A. That was a mistake. Granted, he got injured in year two. I think this could still work out. I think this is more of a TBD than me being wrong. Uh, but man, he did not have a good rookie year and he's not a huge piece for them until proven otherwise. DeAndre Swift, you know, I, I had him as my number one running back in this class. I thought it was fine. I did say that they had other positions they needed to go with. I don't think DeAndre Swift has changed anything for Detroit. And now that they're just getting good, he has two years left on his contract. So they're going to have to pay him by the time they're ready to win. So I would definitely say being critical of that pick was fair. Liked these two picks. Third rounders said these guys could have a chance to start. Was right about that. Um, uh, Stenberg thought was fine. He's kind of a rotational guy. Right on that. Quintez Cephas. Look, for a fifth-round wide receiver, Cephas has made some really good plays. He's been exactly what he was out of Wisconsin. Said he was a poor man's Marvin Jones. I think that's held up. He's a good wide receiver for, and that's why I like that pick. Um, Penasini and Ja'Shawn Cornell is a player I missed on. You know, sometimes it's tough. We just might not ever get to see Ja'Shawn Cornell get a real opportunity as a seventh-round pick. He never really got that in Detroit. This guy had insane get-off, and... It's probably looking like a bad take to have that as an A at this point. So I was wrong. Just kind of sucks we never really got to see him play because, man, his first step was awesome on the inside. Okay, the Green Bay Packers draft. This is, in the title of this video, the worst grade I've ever given a team. Also, sorry, I need to move my webcam. My bad. I'll put my face right there. Um, yeah, we had an A- minus there for Detroit and a B- on Chicago just in case you didn't believe me um as far as this a minus goes I was wrong this was not an a minus draft looking back on it they got some decent pieces but probably more of a c or a c plus draft depending on uh Jeff Okuda and how he works out all right so we're we're one for one I almost feel like I should grab a, a pen and just say more or less how accurate was I let me uh let me grab a notepad real quick all right, got it down. We're one and one. So Green Bay, this, like I said, the worst draft grade I've ever given a team. And that was a lot considering I gave the Jordan Love pick an A+. And this is still, to me, very much a TBD. I know people are really hard on him for that Chiefs game. Look, he had one week of practice, caught off guard uh, with the first team. They had one capable receiver. The O-line got annihilated. I actually did a film breakdown of that game. 
Um, our good friend Andre Weingarten totally agreed with me that that game was, he just was set up to fail. Primetime football in Arrowhead. He had the jitters in the first half, looked terrible, came around in the second half. If Mason Crosby makes his kicks, they actually probably win that game. So um, this is very much TBD. And I still think at that point in time, there was nothing wrong with the Jordan Love pick other than, you know, obviously it, Aaron Rodgers just took a U-turn and became an MVP player again. Uh, it did not feel like Aaron Rodgers was going to play for another five years at that point in time. If you go back, he, 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 as big of an Aaron Rodgers stand as I was, he was starting to regress. I was a huge Jordan Love fan. I had him as my number two quarterback this year. Uh, of course, that's co coming up here is going to be that Justin Herbert take, but I also really did not like Tua. So um, this is a TBD on Jordan Love. I know a lot of people don't want to admit that, but uh, I still think Jordan Love can come, turn into a player. He's only 23 years old. Probably not for Green Bay, but I, I'm i not giving up on Jordan Love. Now, A.J. Dillon. I said in this video, let's see if I can find it. I said he, he could turn into something like Derrick Henry. Let's see if we can find that. I kind of get it. I was even saying running back was a sneaky need for the Packers before the draft. But this third pick gets receiver play. They take a running back who is going to do virtually nothing for you in year one as Aaron Jones is still a stud. True. But I kind of get it. I was even saying running back was a sneaky need for the Packers before the draft. But this third pick, to me, was letting Blake Martinez. And I think he has a great upside. He's an explosive, big-bodied runner. Reminds me a ton of Derrick Henry. There it is. So I like Derrick Henry. I said he was going to turn into a really good player. But my criticism of this was, of course, they need wide receivers. You see what this team has looked like over the last two years and their worst losses. It's receivers getting locked up. There was players that I said they should have drafted at this spot. I think that analysis was spot on. And on top of that, I said the best part of that about this pick is that it gives you an out for Aaron Jones. And then they go and pay Aaron Jones. So it just caused a lot of problems. The Josiah DeGora pick, I thought he was a six round player. I gave this an F. He stinks. That was very fair analysis. I think the second and third rounds here potentially cost Green Bay a championship. There was receivers in this draft, guys like Darnell Mooney, I said they should have drafted, um, that they missed out on and completely misevaluated their wide receiver room. And I do believe that that hurt them. Um, was fine with Kamal Martin. He ended up playing a little bit. John Runyon turned into a much better player. Um, I, at this point, I was just pissed. I thought, like, to still not draft a receiver when some of the guys were falling in this draft. I, I continue to get more and more critical of these picks here. Uh, I did say in here that one of these guys will probably turn into a starter. I thought the value on those guys was fine. It was just, why are you not taking a wide receiver? Uh, Vernon Scott, Jonathan Garvin, uh, TBD slash non-factors. So really this draft, you're walking out of here with a power running back, a starting guard, and Jordan Love. But given what this team needed and how close they were to winning a championship, I think a grade of an F is pretty dang close to fair and my criticism of the Packers for this draft to really not give them anything that helped them take that next step up in 2021 when they ended up in the NFC Championship again, shorthanded against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that criticism holds up. Okay, the Minnesota Vikings loved this draft for Minnesota. And, you know, if I could have seen Jeff Gladney, you know, off field doing stuff that got him kicked off the team, that would have been great. Obviously, I had no way to see that coming. The Vikings couldn't see that coming. So that just kind of sucks from a process perspective. There's nothing I could have done there, though. But gave the Justin Jefferson pick an A. Ezra Cleveland gave that pick an A. He's been a good starter at guard for them. Liked Cam Dantzler as a B plus. Uh, I like the combination here. Uh, or that was a different draft. They took two edge guys. But I, I thought DJ Wanham was, you know, not the best pick. But he's turned into a good player developed by Coach Zimmer there, which I kind of said was probably going to happen. James Lynch hasn't worked out. Troy Dye hasn't worked out. So a couple players I probably was a little bit too high on there. Uh, I think there's something to that. I think James Lynch uh, produced in the Big 12, kind of played that hybrid defensive end spot um, that was just a completely different role projection to the next level. Not a great run defender on the inside. Something to just note on like tweener types. I really thought he would translate well as a tweener into the inside. That hasn't happened. Uh, Troy Dye, a linebacker that I felt like I saw really good zone feel on tape and just wasn't really this elite athlete and undersized linebacker. 
and um, just probably didn't have the highest upside. So it was probably just a little bit too high on those guys. Harrison Hand, KJ Osborne, I completely missed on, man. Did not see him coming. I will admit I was wrong as hell on KJ Osborne. This guy has developed, got outside of that Miami team that just wasn't a very good passing team. And he's been a stud. So I was wrong. Sorry, Vikings fans. KJ Osborne's really good. Um, a bunch of late round picks here. I was wrong on Nate Stanley. I thought Nate Stanley was a really good dart throw on day three of the draft. Really strong arm. Thought he was a good kid. Young guy. I was wrong on him. I have no idea why. Granted, we haven't seen him get a chance to play. But yeah, I was I was wrong on a couple of these guys in the day three. So you know, I, if we're keeping score, I would say a win on the Vikings draft. Vikings is very split. You know, I I liked Ezra Cleveland. I like Justin Jefferson. I think Jeff Gladney couldn't have really seen that coming. There's, there's more L's here than there were W's. So I'll, I'll be critical here. I'll say I was kind of wrong in the Vikings draft. But at the end of the day, you walk out here with Justin Jefferson, and I gave them an A. So is it really all that wrong? No, but we'll give myself an L for that one. Okay, AFC North. Bengals are up first here. We gave this draft a B plus. And I think this is pretty freaking spot on, to be honest. My main criticism here of these picks was why not offensive linemen? And not going offensive linemen got Joe Burrow killed. So to ding them for that, I think was fair. Now, T. Higgins, I, I said, would have been an A pick if not for you know, their desperate needed offensive line. I like T Higgins a lot. I was a, my T Higgins was one of my, my guys in this draft. I thought he was really unfairly criticized. Everyone had Michael Pittman over him. T Higgins ended up getting drafted ahead of Michael Pittman and has, has been a better pro. So, um, although they're close, I never thought it was this big gap, but I just thought T Higgins was, was definitely someone that could have gone in the first round. It's critical of green Bay for not taking T Higgins. So, um, I think the analysis here is pretty spot on love Joe Burrow. Obviously Logan Wilson, I had to give a B because I thought he was a really good player, but not dinged it because of not going O-line. And then these picks, you know, I I liked them finally addressing O-line late, but it's not like I thought Adeniji was some star. Uh, Marcus Bailey was a good dart throw as an injury risk uh, guy at Purdue, but they've had a, you know, a deep linebacker room. They haven't really gotten a chance to see him. So definitely good analysis of this draft for TFG on this one. Then the Browns, we gave this draft an A. Jedrick Wills, love the Grant Delpit pick. I was a little bit lower on these two guys, Jordan Elliott, Jacob Phillips. Um, you know, I a lot of people liked Elliott. I kind of caved. I had a pretty bad gut feeling about him with this pick. I, I wish I would have stood my ground on that one a little bit more. Thought Harrison Bryant was fine. Nick Harris, we, we get to see Nick Harris this year. Donovan Peoples-Jones late as an A. He's a starting receiver for them. Uh, hopefully we can get a, a better look at Grant Delpit this year, but... I mean, this was a really good draft. I think I think this was another good analysis of this class. Um, pretty good year for Cleveland there. Okay, we had another A plus grade for Baltimore, and this is funny because you know we just gave Baltimore an A plus, and looking back on this draft, it was not as good as it looked at the time. So Patrick Queen, I thought was a just going to be a monster for the Ravens. He has not. I think I have adjusted my analysis a lot due to Patrick Queen. Guys with exciting testing numbers and highlight reels don't always make the best NFL linebackers. And he's had those splashes at the next level. It's not like he's been a horrible player, but, um, you know, with Patrick Queen kind of not really working out, that's kind of why I was a little bit lower on N'Kobe Dean, to be completely honest with you guys. And N'Kobe Dean's not even the athlete Patrick Queen was. So I think Patrick Queen has, has maybe caused me to review the way I look at the linebacker position. So a little bit of a learning lesson on that one. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, honestly, if he didn't get hurt last year, this is probably fine. They have so much talent on this team. I thought this was a situation where they were a team prepared to draft a running back. If you're going to take a running back early, I would say he better be damn talented. You better have a need for a running back, and um, you better not be passing up like big needs to draft a running back. That was my criticism of Seattle in this year's draft. Um and you, you, you better be, I, I can't remember if I said it, but you got to be ready to win now. Like, look at Detroit. We said DeAndre Swift was fine, but they, the, the timeline didn't really make sense there. So uh, if he didn't get hurt in year two, I think this grade of, of J.K. Dobbins is fine. Matabuike in the third round, definitely an A. I mean, he's a good starting defensive lineman who's only going to continue to get better. Devin Duvernay, 
this is wait and see for me. It really is. I was a huge Devin Duvernay fan. This is the year that we find out if Devin Duvernay can play. They let Marquise Brown go. I uh, was, you know, kind of blocked by Willie Sneed in year one, year two. They just didn't use him a whole lot. But when he's played, he's showed that he can be a good slot guy, really good guy with ball in his hands. I was a big fan of Devin Duvernay. I had a first to a second round grade on him. And, you know, um, I... I think it's going to be a big year for Devin Duvernay. He's a breakout candidate. I'm not going to apologize for that A-plus quite yet. Malik Harrison, this was wrong. I don't really know why he hasn't worked out. Maybe he just didn't have the work ethic, um, but big-bodied freak athlete, in theory, should have developed next to Patrick Queen with the Baltimore Ravens, uh, but it just hasn't happened. Tyree Phillips, I wasn't crazy about. Ben Bredesen, I thought was a little bit better. That's definitely played out at the next level, so that was solid. Roderick Washington, I thought was whatever. James Prochet, love that pick in the sixth round. He's still on this team as a sixth round player. He's made plays when it's happened. And Geno Stone out of Iowa. I think the athletic profile there has held him back, um, but still kind of hanging around practice squad and stuff. Probably wasn't a full on A, but yeah, I think you do you knocked this off of an A plus. This wasn't some like unbelievable slam dunk of a draft, but um. I don't think this was a bad draft. I would, I don't think this is an L for me necessarily, but we'll give myself an L just to be critical here. I I mean, I think it's a B plus draft. I, looking back on it, I don't think it's an A plus. Maybe we need like a kinda column. That's, that's probably what we need. I'm gonna get rid of that L. I think we need a kind of, or a inconclusive. We'll keep an L on that Vikings one, though. Okay. Steelers. Way at the end here. I gave this draft a B, and this is looking like a L for me, just right off the bat. Chase Claypool should have been slam dunk pick. He's been a monster. I did give it an A-. It's not like I didn't like the pick. I was right on that. But Alex Highsmith, I was wrong. I think me doubting a lower level of competition guy came back in my face now i don't think he's like a long-term high-end number one guy but man he's been a really good player for them from day one i was dead wrong so sorry steelers fans about that anthony mcfarland we just haven't really gotten a chance to see much from him kevin dotson uh in the fourth round i was really unaware of him so got to dig deeper into my um you know i think i have done a better job of, of digging deeper into some of these late round offensive linemen uh, but yeah, Dotson has been a really good guard. I was wrong there. And these guys are definitely still developmental guys. I think they're inconclusive, but I will collect a loss on this Steelers draft because of Alex Highsmith, who I did not like that pick. And man, he has worked out. So right now we're four, three, and one. Call it. Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. I was really critical of this draft. I did not like the Jalen Rieger pick. I just, to, to take him over Justin Jefferson, it's it's what I said. Let's hear what I said about uh, about this pick right here. Jalen Rieger is not your typical first round receiver, in my opinion, especially in this class. Uh, I've poked fun at him just being a kick returner. I, you know, the reason I said is I think day one, like week one, I, I view him as a kick returner, not a guy that's super ready to play. Yep right now was basically used in a gimmick role at TCU was not helped by the quarterback play there at TCU now there's some upside here with Jalen Rieger I understand the thought process on that. he is an excellent athlete you hope that you put him in here behind Deshaun Jackson who's a hard time staying healthy maybe he starts some in the slot uh, you manufacture some touches for him where he can use that value back here as the 21st pick I just personally strong, strongly disagree with the evaluation. I think Justin Jefferson would have been a much better pick. This team actually right. well, did a phenomenal job. I mean, the fact that we said that right this... there basically makes this, you know, me being right about this draft. The Jalen Hurts pick, I just, I believed in Carson Wentz. And has the Jalen Hurts pick really gotten them anywhere? Not really. I mean, it's been kind of a mess in that quarterback situation. I still don't think Jalen Hurts is the future. He's been a lot better than I thought. This was not an F pick. Um, but still kind of just made things complicated and messy, and they're still, I think, going to be looking for a quarterback next year. Davion Taylor has not worked out. I was wrong on him. Another undersized linebacker. I think this has really come back around for me as far as like learning from my mistakes. If you look at what I said about, say, Brian Asamoah out of Oklahoma, like 
Damon Taylor is Brian Asamoah, so you hope that doesn't happen again. I like Kayvon Wallace. He might actually get a chance to start this year, so I don't think that I don't think that grade's going to backfire. I really like Jack Driscoll. He's played for them. It's been at guard, uh, but he's held up and been a really good swing player for them. Really big win here on having Quez Watkins over John Hightower. Watkins was a better player for me, and he's been the better player, so I was right about that. I mean, not going to apologize for giving an A grade to a guy that some people thought was a third, fourth round value with upside falling to a team. Uh, probably something off the field that held him back. And then Casey Hill is no longer on the team. But I think, for the most part, my criticisms of these picks were fair. My evaluations were pretty good. So I would say good analysis here on the Eagles draft. Um, I think I skipped, skipped the Cowboys grade here. All right. I love this draft. They took, I gave this an A plus. CD Lamb knocked it out of the park. Trayvon Diggs, as much of a, I'm a Trayvon Diggs hater now, but, whoops, but I gave that pick an A. So at least there's that, Cowboys fans. Neville Gallimore was worth the risk. Did think he needed time. Big year for him this year. Reggie Robinson was not a big fan of that pick. He has not worked out for them. Tyler Biadesh, I said, you're getting a starting center in the fourth round. That's a huge steal. Bradley and a, I did like uh, a lot of people really liked him and just not a great athlete. I would compare that to maybe Cameron Thomas this year. Like you got to have athleticism if you're going to stand out at the next level. Um, so noteworthy on that. I think we also kind of glossed over Kenny Willikas for the Vikings, who I really liked that pick back on that draft regrade, same kind of deal. Um, ben DiNucci didn't see much there. He got to start. Wasn't anything good. So definitely good analysis on this Cowboys draft. Loved that draft. Thought it was one of the better ones and was right. New York Giants. I give this draft an A plus as well. I loved Andrew Thomas. Up top was my number one tackle. In time, <clears throat> obviously, um, Tristan Wirfs has been better, but you're not going to apologize about Andrew Thomas, who I did say, <clears throat> wow, excuse me. <clears throat> I did say Andrew Thomas needed some time to rework his technique. I hated the way Georgia deployed their offensive line. Um, and I thought he had a lot of work to do, and that showed up in year one. But he worked at it. The athletic traits have thrived, and he's now up there with Tristan Wirfs. I don't think that's controversial. Wirfs had an incredible rookie year, all pros first year. I think it made case Andrew Thomas was better in year two than Wirfs was. Uh, so that, to me, was, was good analysis. Xavier McKinney, good pick in the second round. Really like that. Matt Peart, I missed on. And... Man, this is surprising. I really like Matt Peart, especially as like an end of the third round guy. And he's been a backup. He's gotten on the field. He hasn't been abused. I was right to say that he's a decent floor player. He's lengthy, he's athletic. Uh, but obviously they just drafted his replacement in um, uh, Evan Neal. And we're probably not going to see a whole lot more of Matt Peart. I was wrong to be so high on him. It's not that he's been bad. It's not that this, you know, was a bad pick looking back on it. End of the third round. Uh, but, you know, I was definitely too high on Matt Peart. I think the lack of an anchor, perhaps. Um, a, a lengthy guy that was lighter. And, you know, what? Let's, let's look up Matt Peart's arm length real quick. Arm length is something, holy crap, 36 and 5 eighths inches. Yeah, I just... Maybe he's just soft. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I missed on Matt Peart. I really liked him as a prospect. Darnay Holmes, love that pick in the fourth round. He's been a good slot corner for them. Lemieux, I thought in the fifth round was fine. Cam Brown, Carter Coughlin, again, I thought, you know, good values. They haven't really gotten on the field. Probably was a little bit too high on those guys. Didn't see much in these guys. Hey, Crowder's played a bunch, but he's been horrible when he's been out there. Uh, I gave this draft an A+. I think... That's probably closer to being good analysis than bad analysis. Was definitely too high in Matt Peart. You probably knock it down to like an A. But you got a starting safety, a good, a really good franchise left tackle, slot corner, and that's better than average draft for sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say pretty good on this one with obviously Matt Peart. All right, and then Washington. Did I sneak a grade in here on them? Let's see. There it is. B plus. Okay. Um. I said pump the brakes on Chase Young being a generational pass rusher. I did have him as a blue chip player. Really good rookie year. Gets injured in year two. Still really good, but I did not think he was Miles Garrett. Uh, 
I think proper analysis there, just saying A, not A+. Plus. They did what they should have done. Antonio Gibson, I was wrong about for sure. Um, I don't know. I, I still think he leaves a little bit to be desired. The explosiveness is obvious. He's been a much better pick than a D+. Plus. I'm not trying to say I was right here, but I do think they're eventually going to replace him. I, I could be wrong about that, but... Uh, there are things to criticize him as far as his consistency in the receiving game, which is crazy because he was like this wide receiver hybrid, and his um, his vision. He just he does leave a lot to be de desired as far as his vision goes. Uh, Sadiq Charles has been better than I thought. Uh, a gamble on youth and athleticism. This is an, a great example of where you go matters. Washington, for all of their faults, has actually been a very good team at developing offensive line so um good on them for getting Sadiq Charles to at least be a quality guard now he's not like some slam dunk he's not a starter for them or anything this is probably more of like a C or a C plus but I really did not like him and he's developed well uh Antonio Gandy Golden has done nothing I bought into the hype you know I I was lower on Golden than the hype was I think people had a mostly as like a second or third round guy I thought end of the fourth round, that was a good risk. But even then, should have trusted my eyes. I wasn't huge on him, but I bought into the hype and and said, yep, he's good value there. That has not been true. Uh, Keith Ismail, whatever, in the fifth round. Kalik Hudson. Kalik Hudson still, I think, could play. Uh, really good athlete out of Michigan. Definitely needed some time to develop, so I'd say wait and see on him. Cameron Curl, I missed on him as well. I... I gave it a C plus, so I said there's something about this that's that's nice, but yeah, I mean, that's an A plus plus pick. That's one of the better seventh round picks in the last five years or so. So this is an A plus. James Smith Williams been kind of a rotational guy. I gave it a B plus. I had some criticisms here, but you know, I think the grade stands. The B plus grade stands just for different reasons. Get young. Gibson worked out. You cam curl, but it's just not the players I thought would work out. I, I will just say I was wrong on this Washington class, even though the final grade worked out for me. Process over results here on this channel. All right, the legendary Miami Dolphins draft class. I mean, this was a slam dunk analysis for me. Tua, I gave a B minus. He was my QB4. I said they took him too early. They should have gone O-line earlier. And that my, my take was that Jordan Love later was better than Tua at this point. They could have gotten Jordan Love at pick 18 and gotten, say, Jedrick uh, Tristan Wirfs, who was my number two tackle at this point in time. So if I was drafting for the Dolphins, my first two picks would have been Tristan Wirfs and Jordan Love. We don't know how Jordan Love would have worked out in Miami. We don't know if Jordan Love's any good. But I think you're taking that over what they ended up doing here because I thought Tua was a low ceiling player who's high floor was reduced because of injury questions and that has aged to its entirety now he's probably going to play really well this year because he is one of the best surrounding you know he, he's one of the easiest jobs in, in the nfl right now for a quarterback let's face it all your job is to get the ball in the hands of Jalen waddle and tyree kill and your passing numbers are going to look good because of it um i think me being a little bit pumped the brakes on this pick was very much justified same thing with austin jackson i gave this pick a b because he was one of the better offensive linemen available, but I did not think he was going to be an impact. I thought he was a total project. I had a second round grade on Austin Jackson. So honestly, I probably should have been a little bit more critical with a B because um, he just, he is not, he's been a liability for them. Noah Igbenogany, I, I felt like you needed to continue giving to a help, whether it was receivers or offensive line. I thought he was fine. I thought he was a project corner. I thought he would work out and, He's still only, you know, he's only 22 years old. He was 20 when he got drafted. He could still work out, but I mean, to to really, and I think in general, we're seeing that my grades were a little bit higher back then. I, I'm trying to be even more critical, but um, I mean, C plus for this looks pretty dang good. I, I didn't mind Robert Hunt. I said he'd be better at guard than he would be at tackle. It's exactly how it played out, uh, but I did think there were better players available, but he's been fine. Raquan Davis, I did, I thought was fine. Um, but again, I was like, get more offensive line. This is a complete disaster. I thought Kinley was a good value. He's played well when he's been in there. Uh, the Brandon Jones pick, I, I just really didn't like because 
it was early for a box safety, and I think that analysis was was good. Um, the rest of those guys, I mean, Strobridge, Weaver. Weaver was interesting. There's something going on with Curtis Weaver off the field that we weren't aware of. He falls in this draft, uh, gets injured and cut like right away. Um, he's on Cleveland right now. I wouldn't entirely give up on him. I thought he was a second round player, so that really saved this grade a little bit. But overall, I think this was really good analysis of this Dolphins draft. I said you got a really incredibly underwhelming haul for your first, you know, you had four top 50 picks. And I thought you got a good guard, a developmental corner, a developmental tackle, and Jimmy Garoppolo. And that's exactly what's happened. So that's a that's an, a, a win for me for uh, 2020 TFG. The Buffalo Bills, I gave... I think I forgot to put the graphic in. A grade for the Buffalo Bills on this one. So, Trump we gave us explosiveness. Gave us AJ Epinesa was a little bit too high on his upside, I think. Um, loved his floor. He's had a good floor. He has not been a bad player. This was not a bad pick in the second round, but was not an A-plus pick, I think. Athletic traits at the edge position, first, second round. If if you want a high end starter, you got to be able to you got to be able to get off the ball, have an elite first step, have speed, bend. You got to you got to have some kind of athletic advantage on these tackles. And I think AJ Epinesa, I should have been a little bit more cautious on the lack of athleticism. Zach Moss is an A minus in the third round is fine. I, he, he's been like okay. I. Don't think there's anything wrong with that great. Gabriel Davis, I was not right about. I think he went to a great situation to develop, but did have him as a deep threat type. That's what he's been. So definitely went to the right spot to develop. It's not like I shredded this pick, but he's definitely been better than I thought he would be. I think I had him as a fourth or fifth round guy. Uh, Jake Fromm. This take is funny. Everyone likes to remind me, you know, January, February of this draft. I, I kept tweeting. I was like, weekly reminder that Jake Fromm will be a first round pick. Jake Fromm's Georgia tape was not that bad, but, you know, as similarly to this year, I had the similar stuff about Carson Strong. As we learned more about his arm talent and got to see him throw live at the combine and got to collect more and more information, I lowered Jake Fromm. Now, I still ended up with him as a second or a third round guy. I thought he could be a, you know, potential starter and a good backup. Still probably too high, but I, I will say on Jake Fromm, he's still very young. He was forced into an impossible situation with the New York Giants last year, one of the most inept offenses you'll ever see. Like, yeah, his stats look like crap, but watch the film and tell me what you want Jake Fromm to do differently uh, with the way they were calling plays and the playmakers and the offensive line he had. Um, I still think Jake Fromm will stick around the league and uh, be a good backup for a while here. Um, Tyler Bass in the sixth round. You know, this is like the one kicker that worked out. Good job. Hit them in the Bengals, taking Evan McPherson. Uh, but sixth round, it's not like I shredded this. Uh, I really liked Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State. We've definitely seen me learn uh, or adjust my analysis from... I mean, I've been burned on a lot of these guys. And my luck will be that now that I've flipped around and criticized guys like David Bell and Drake London um, in this year's draft, those are going to be the ones that work out. But Isaiah Hodgins was a baller man I, he showed flashes of adam Thielen to me uh good route runner 6-4 quick feet incredible ball skills good with the ball in his hands does that sound like anybody does that sound like drake london who just went eighth overall um isaiah hodgins on the buffalo bills has not been able to do anything and you know maybe he just doesn't have that dog in him or whatever it was but dude go back and watch isaiah hodgins tape this guy was a stud at oregon state i wasn't the only one that thought he was you know a good mid-round player um, but whiffed on that, but was right about Dane Jackson. I, I love this pick in the seventh round. He's he's like a good fourth corner for them. And A grade for that is totally fair. So we gave this draft an A, and that was true. I think you probably flip like the Gabriel Davis and AJ Epinesa. Was this a full A? They didn't have a first round pick, so you keep that in mind. I mean, without a first round pick, you walk out here with AJ Epinesa, who's a good rotational edge. It's not like he's been a bust. He just isn't a super high upside player. 
Zach Moss is a starting caliber running back. Gabe Davis, who's been a monster. Um, Tyler Bass is a great kicker. And Dane Jackson. Without a first-round pick, those are five impact players. I gave this an A. I think this is closer to me being right about this draft than anything. Then Miami Dolphins, we did them. New York Jets. Okay. I was critical of this draft. A lot of people really liked this New York Jets draft, and I was critical of it. I was hard on the, the Jets for taking Becton over both. I guess Wirfs was gone, but I said Wills. Uh, I would have gone with um, Tristan Wirfs. Is, sorry. I get those two guys confused. How can you not? And I caved. I freaking caved on Denzel Mims. I should not have done this. Um, I ended, you know, I when I got through Denzel Mims tape, I had a fourth round grade on him. Contested catch guy, uh, older player breaking out, thought was overrated for his senior bowl performance. A lot of hype on him, a lot of Twitter hype on him. And man, I wish I held my ground on him. If you go back to a lot of things I said about Denzel Mims pre-draft, I probably would have ended up giving this more of like a B minus. And yeah, I thought this, these first two picks were really overrated. Ashton Davis, uh, why did I give that a C? I feel like that's, that can't be right. What did I say there? I liked Ashton Davis. Yes, I look at these picks, you're getting Mekhi Becton and Mims, who I think are, are starters. I think they're good, good picks, good players. Then you take Ashton Davis, who I think is a good player, but not a need. And then you- Oh, not a need. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't be criticizing a team for, um, you know, not going need in the third round. So, yeah, I should have been higher on that. Uh, Jubari Zuniga nailed this. Did not think he was going to make it in the NFL, and he has not. Uh, LaMichael P. Ryan didn't see a fourth round player in him, so like that. James Morgan, I gave this an F. I was like, what? I, he was one of the lowest players on my entire draft board. Did not think he was draftable. He hasn't done jack squat. Cameron Clark didn't think it was a good good fourth round pick. Loved the Bryce Hall pick out of Virginia. And Braden Mann said, why are you taking a punter? Uh, I don't even know if he's their punter right now. But um, nailed the evaluation here. Dinged the Jets for not taking Wirfs. I should have held my ground on Denzel Mims. But my analysis of Denzel Mims was good. I thought he was overhyped. And yeah, I mean, I ended up giving this draft a C and that's, I, I'm proud of that, that analysis right there. All right. New England Patriots. We gave it him a C plus love the Duggar pick. He's been really good for them. Josh Uche. I think we see a little bit more Uche this year. A lot of those edge guys have left out the building. Thought Anthony Jennings as well was a good player. I think that's TBD on those two guys. I think they're good players. Wouldn't rule them out. The Patriots really did not invest in edge this offseason. So I would keep an eye on one of those two guys to really work out. I like the double dart throw. Both guys really good scheme fits. Uh, Devin Asiasi didn't think he was an impact. Thought it was a bad pick. I was right about that. Dalton Keene I thought was fine. Uh, I thought drafting this guy in the fifth round was really stupid. This is a great example, you guys, of why, why kicker analysis is so weird and why I'm critical of teams that take kickers in the fourth and fifth round. You know, the Bills take Tyler Bass after the Patriots took this dude who's not their kicker. So this goes to show you how that stuff can work out. Love the Michael and Wainu pick. He's been a monster for them. Aaron Malua Woodward didn't like them. Can't really ask for much better analysis of a draft than what we had on this one. Gave this a C plus. That's a huge dub on that one so right now we are 11 4 and 1 on my draft grades okay here we go guys oh wait this is nfc west you know what, screw it let's let's get it out of the way afc west let's get it out of the way let's do it now let's eat my l's this is biggest l on this channel in the last couple years and i've done my share of eating it Justin Herbert, I give a D. At least I didn't give it an F. I at least said, you know, um, let's let's hear. What did I say about this Justin Herbert pick? Not quite as many picks to talk about. Uh, so they take Justin Herbert with the sixth pick. It, we've been kind of joking about this for like three months. It's like, 
He's an obvious bust. He's the next Mitch Trubisky. He doesn't process defenses. He reads defenses slowly. Uh, his accuracy can be sporadic. He doesn't have that it factor. He didn't develop on a year-to-year -year basis. It's it's everything we've ever said about Mitch Trubisky, about Blake Bortles, that just staring us in the face. It's like, don't draft this guy in the top 10. He's a strong-armed guy, <laughs> worth a shot in the second, third round. Uh, you don't what want him idiot. starting right away. You don't want the pressure of idiot. being a top 10 pick. He's not going to be able to handle it. I, if this works out, I, I'll come out here and say I'm wrong. I give every rookie quarterback a fair crack. It's it's uh, you know a clean slate once you get to the NFL. But as a prospect, there. I cannot sit here and endorse him with the sixth overall pick. And quite frankly, if they didn't do this, w was anyone going to take him? You know, I'm, I'm sure they would have, but are, are you really that bummed if you have to pass on him and take Jordan Love instead? We'll see. Uh, you could have traded we'll up see. with the same move that you came up for Kenneth Murray to get Jordan Love, who I think is a significantly better quarterback prospect than Justin Herbert. It's not even <laughs> remotely close in my personal Oof. opinion. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, this was an L, you guys. Justin Herbert burned me. He burned many, many people, and the Chargers got the last laugh on that. Um, that said, I did not like trading up for a linebacker. That has been true. And this was the beginning of me really being anti first round linebackers. And, you know, I like Patrick Queen as a prospect. Kenneth Murray was a little bit more iffy. I think you can get Kenneth Murray's in the mid round. I, I mean, as a prospect, he's kind of similar to like what Leo Chanel was this year, what Chad Muma was. Um, frankly, he's similar to what Quay Walker was. Uh, so, you know, he really has not worked out been hurt a little bit he's just struggled to understand the coverage stuff so it was fair to be critical of that josh kelly uh i thought was just not a good enough running back to draft right there he's had his moments but i think that holds up joe reed i was a big fan of i hope we get to see some joe reed this year i forgot to mention some of the biggest winners of this year's chargers draft were guys like joe reed and um jalen guyton the other receivers not keenan allen and mike williams goes to show you that they believe in those guys uh gilman i didn't think was was had an nfl athleticism he's been a problem for them and kj hill as an a plus pick just really slow guy but look it, when kj hills played it's not like he sucked so i'm not gonna apologize for that seventh round pick he's he, i still think he's a functional slot receiver um they just haven't really had a need for him because keenan allen plays so much slot so obviously this is an l I mean, come on, Marcus. <laughs> Completely wrong. Sorry, Chargers fans. I was wrong on Justin Herbert. It's been said a million times. Um, let's go to Denver. If the video wants to load here. Okay, we gave Denver an A here. Love Jerry Judy. I, I think we see a much better version of Jerry Judy now that he is a quarterback. Same thing with KJ Hamler. He was injured last year. Very much to be determined on KJ Hamler. This guy was super young, but um, T TBD on KJ Hamler. I liked OJ Moody in the third round. Thought he could be a low-end starter. Was right about that. I was wrong on Lloyd Cushenberry. I really was. Had him as a, a day three guy. And it it was. this is why we wait. This is exactly why we wait to do these draft grades. Um, he sucked in the first year. And I was like, ha ha, I was right. But I waited. And I was wrong. He developed... Here with Denver, he's a solid center. And yeah, I was wrong. McTelvin Aguim, didn't love it. Albert O, thought was a good pick in the fourth round. Looks like he's going to be a starter for them. Uh, Sternad, Derek Tuzka, Cleveland, just kind of whatever. Um, Natani Moody, I really liked. And they've got kind of a crowded offensive line there at this point, especially on the inside. Someone that we all knew had injury risks, but I gave this an A+, because the risk was so worth it. Uh, Natati Moody offensive line tape is some of the most fun offensive line tape you'll see. Uh, not going to apologize about giving that an A+. Plus. I think this is prob this probably holds up. I was a little too low on Cushenberry. I mean, you maybe bring it down a little bit because... Yeah, I think you bring it down a little bit. Now that I look at, at it, you know, they haven't gotten huge impacts in the second, third round. Even Judy hasn't really been an A-plus pick. So, yeah, let's lower this to an inconclusive grade. I don't think the analysis was really all that bad, um, other than really Lloyd Cushenberry, honestly. All right, let's go to the Chiefs. Oh, gosh. This is something I've talked a lot about, actually. I gave Clyde edwards Hilaire an A-plus, and... Um, something that you you saw me learning from that from what i said here i gave it an a minus okay so um 
let's let's just listen to what I said about Clyde Edward Tillaire and then we'll go back and uh... great draft here. I think that they did a really good job. So this is something I talked about with the Baltimore Ravens. I, I will slaughter teams for drafting running back when it's a reach, when uh, not just the player, but also like if if you have other needs, basically, or if you have plenty of cap space to go sign, you know, uh, Devonta Freeman or Melvin Gordon or Todd Gurley, like whatever it may be, I'm going to criticize you if you have the room to sign a starting running back or if you already have a start. Like there's plenty of reasons why taking a running back this early is moronic. In the Chiefs case, they're they're probably not drafting a starter anywhere here at 32, right? They're drafting guys that might compete for starting jobs. Maybe like a Christian Fulton would compete with Brashad Breland, for example. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire gives you an instant upgrade. Quite frankly, running back, probably the, the weakest position on this team. I do like Damian Williams, but he has a record of injuries and is on the last year of his contract. So there's value in a cheap five-year contract here for the Kansas City Chiefs who have like $800 of cap space. They can't make any free agent signings at running back. They're not the New Orleans Saints where the cap space doesn't exist. Um, so <laughs> that's continued. I, I like this well. pick a lot. To me, DeAndre Swift is a better football player, offers yeah. more of an explosive element, but I can't complain with Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's not far behind DeAndre Swift at all. Um, he's very similar to, to Kareem Hunt, who gave this offense. Okay. So yeah, I did. I did have Swift higher, so that was right. But Listen to what I said about the Bills this year. Very similar. Now, granted, the Bills was in the second round, but just taking a running back because he's the last remaining need on your roster isn't always the right thing to do. Um, and I will also say, like, if you're going to draft a running back early, I think you want more of an athletic freak than Edwards Hilaire was. I think probably a lot of people scared about Kyron Williams this year because Clyde Edwards Hilaire, 5'9", you know, not a super explosive player. It's an athlete's position. And Clyde edwards Hilaire, not an elite athlete. So I think learn a little bit there as well. But the Bills would have been much better off drafting another safety or a pass rusher or an offensive lineman or something that even if he wasn't going to start right away, don't just use the first round pick on a, someone that probably shouldn't be drafted in the first round just because it's your last need. Um, but they really made up for it. Willie Gay, you know, he was always going to need some time to develop. But such an explosive player. I still think he's coming along. I think this A-plus is totally fine. Um, Lucas Niang, I like this pick. He's been a starting right tackle for them. So good grade there. Legereus Sneed, as a fourth rounder, I gave this an A. He was one of my, my guys in this draft. So really good analysis on him. Um, being a really good pick that late. Dana, Keys didn't see much there. Um, yeah, I mean... The Clyde Edwards thing we learned from, I gave this an A. I think being right about Legereus Sneed as a fifth round pick kind of makes up for that personally. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll go. We'll go in the inconclusive comment, uh, in the inconclusive or a tie column on that one, because yeah, I mean I shouldn't have given Edwards Hilaire an A minus. I should have I should have stood to my RB rankings where I had. Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift higher than him. And I should have said, don't just take a running back in the first round because you can't. I still think you, I still think drafting a running back in the first round is fine, but looking back on it, Clyde edwards Solaire was not what Brees Hall was this year. He's not what Najee Harris was last year. All right. The Raiders. <laughs> oh, we love, we love you, John Gruden. We miss these drafts. So, C minus here for this Raiders draft. And I think this was pretty good. Henry Ruggs. That is what it is, man. Um, I I thought there was other better receivers in this draft. Guys like CD Lamb and Jerry Judy. That was true. Henry Ruggs also the off field thing. He's never gonna play again. So it is what it is, but you definitely would take CD Lamb and you know, Jerry Judy on a better, with a better quarterback, I think would be a better player by this point in time. It's been a mess there in Denver. Damon Arnett. This is one of the worst picks I've ever seen. I thought he was a third or fourth round guy and they took him way too early. Complete bust. Like literally, what the hell was that pick? That was so stupid. We gave that an F. Lynn Bowden, they traded him away. He's actually shown that he can be a decent slot for Miami when he's gotten on the field. I didn't like Brian Edwards. I criticized this pick because I wasn't sure he was going to make the team. 
I didn't understand why they were adding all these wide receivers into the room. Uh, it wasn't necessarily that I thought, let, let's listen to what I said about this. I know I wasn't crazy high in Edwards, but I, I remember knocking this for a different reason. Why do you take Brian Edwards, who I don't think is a particularly good prospect? I don't think he runs great routes. He does have good ball skills and is fast and he's big, but he is very similar to a lot of other prospects that have come out that just don't really show the football acumen as far as route running, zone recognition, physicality. Like, yeah, I was too low on Brian Edwards. I was wrong on him. Really good receiver. Was on my breakout list last year, so we adjusted pretty quickly. I liked what I saw from him at the NFL level, but coming out, whiffed on him for sure. Gamble on that kind of physical profile, I suppose, at that point in the draft. Um, I like John Simpson that late. He's still kind of starting-ish for them. Uh, Meek Robinson, I still think he's got some good football ahead of him. So all in all, I think the analysis was good here. We gave this draft a C-, and that's probably even generous. I mean, we, we thought this was one of the worst drafts of the year. It was, but I was wrong about Brian Edwards. So I guess there's that. All right, NFC West, told you guys this was going to be a long video. There's no other way to do this. I gave this Cardinals draft an A+. Plus. Yikes. I mean, that's an L, right? Isaiah Simmons, similar stuff we said about other linebackers. Really hard position to play. First round hit rate at this spot is really tough. Can still get there. We're not giving up on Isaiah Simmons yet, but it's taken too long to say this was an A-plus pick with the eighth overall pick. Probably more like a C-plus. Josh Jones. Um... This was kind of weird. Um, I didn't get a... It was my fault, but I didn't get a fair look at Josh Jones. I found out three days before the draft that the tackle that I had watched at Houston was the wrong side. So, like, three days before the draft, I was scrambling, watched, like, one game on Josh Jones, knew everybody liked him, and I was like, all right, fine, he's a great steal. I had, like, a pretty much a, you know misguided evaluation on josh Jones, what i'm saying so um that was my fault totally stupid grade there a plus um he's not really anything for them he's maybe a guard lucky foe to whatever run defender richard lawrence evan weaver nothing's come of those guys um lawrence can still get there he's still young good first step Eno Benjamin as a seventh round pick. Thought he had a good chance to be a third down back. Could still be true. Maybe he gets a chance this year if he's even still there in Arizona. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this was wrong. I was wrong on this draft. I uh, was too generous about these first two picks, really. Okay, the Niners. An A minus. So definitely was, was overly generous um, with a lot of these just overall grades just in general compared to what we're doing nowadays. But Kinlaw, I really thought was going to work out. Granted was hurt last year, big year three coming up for him. I totally understood the process. And some of this was a little bit of, I told you so, because I did have a good take in there where I kept mocking the Niners to take him. I said, they can't afford DeForest Buckner. So they're going to trade up. Or they're gonna get the pick. They're gonna get his replacement with the pick that they got for DeForest Buckner. So I was at least right about that. But he has not been an A pick. He's been way worse than that. Just a really rough rookie season in general. It's a tough position to make an impact as a rookie, and then he loses his second year. So kind of similar to Jeff Akuda's grade here. Could still work out for the Niners, but a huge year three for Javon Kinlaw coming up, uh, and he's a little bit older. I think he's 25 years old now. So. Wait and see on that. Really powerful rusher with a great first step. Can definitely, on that D-line, still work out. Brandon Ayuk. Man, I I was not crazy on Brandon Ayuk, but at least I this was a good scheme analysis. And I think B for Brandon Ayuk holds up. He's been good. I don't think he's been a superstar or anything. Um, I said, I, I thought he had some issues with his game. There's been a little bit of something there early on in the year. Just kind of struggled to get on the field. Uh, but in this system, I was like, this is double Debo's. I kept saying that you got double Debo's here, crossing routes, get the ball in his hands, really explosive player for Kyle Shanahan. I totally understand what they see in him. And that, that actually has held up pretty well. Colton McKiss, uh, Kivitz out of West Virginia, fifth round pick. Thought it was a good dart throw. 
Charlie Warner liked this pick late in the sixth or, or in the sixth round. He's their number two tight end right now, so that's been solid. Um, I also factored in that they acquired Trent Williams into this grade. Obviously a win there. That's one of the better draft day trades you'll ever see. Uh, and then Juwan Jennings has been an impact for them as a seventh round pick. I like that pick, thought he fit their system well as a big slot type. Um, compared him to Jalen Hurd, who they drafted the year before and never worked out. But yeah, Juwan Jennings has made some plays. So overall, I think the analysis here was pretty dang good. Javon Kinlaw, of course, we didn't get to see that second year. But with that said, I, I think this goes in the win column. Maybe you guys can let me know if you disagree. So we are currently 13, 6, and 3 as far as being right about these draft rates. The Rams. Okay. Another one, an interesting Rams class. They love these late round picks, which makes this stuff difficult. Cam Akers, I was wrong on Cam Akers, straight up. I had him as a third or fourth round guy. Clearly at this point in time, I was not valuing athleticism at the running back position quite enough fact that I had a guy like Clyde Edwards Hilaire over him and then really didn't like this pick. In all reality, the Rams drafting Cam Akers at this point in time made a lot of sense. Now, um, I did like Daryl Henderson, but shouldn't have counted him for anything at this point in time. So yeah, I was wrong about that. There's no way around it. He's been a really good back when he's been healthy. Obviously the Achilles sucks, but uh, can hopefully get back to being a game-changing running back. Van Jefferson as a late second He's, he just hasn't gotten the opportunity, right? I mean, I would love to see Van Jefferson get utilized in this offense, but he, he just, he doesn't run block <laughs> and they hate that about him. So it's kept him off the field, but he's played well when he's been out there. I have no regrets about that grade. Terrell Lewis always had health issues, but at the end of the third round, I thought was fine. Uh, we'll see if Terrell Lewis gets to play this year. They've, they've had a lot of guys. He's had opportunities. Let's, how, how has Terrell Lewis really done for them? Let's see. So two years, yeah, again, the snap count's really low. You know, he's gotten some pressures. He's got some sacks. He's gotten out there. He's, he's definitely not a, a flop yet as a third-round pick. So we'll see. We'll see how that continues to, to go. Terrell Burgess has had some injury problems. Bryson Hopkins was a guy that needed to develop, but I think could be a, a good year for him. Jordan Fuller, I at least put the plus there, but that's obviously been a steal in the sixth round. He's been a starting caliber linebacker for him. Didn't see much in these guys. So I gave it a B minus. It's probably a little better than that. This is actually a pretty good haul for the Rams. Although, I mean, they didn't have a first. Two seconds. I think the Jefferson and Akers kind of meet in between a little bit. The overall grade is probably fine, but... Just, you know, if I'm going to be overly critical of these teams, I'll be overly critical of myself and say, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't high enough on Fuller and was too low on Cam Akers. So I'll give myself an L for that one. We're honest here on this channel. Okay, the Seahawks. C minus grade here. Jordan Brooks has been better than a D plus. Been a good linebacker. I did say, I, I think I remember saying that the he's probably going to turn into a good player. This is very similar to what I said about the uh, the Walker pick for, for Green Bay. I said he's probably going to turn into a good player, but you're way over drafting a guy. Whereas the gap between him and other guys is wide. Let's, let's see what I said. In the first round, we can almost you know guess going into every draft like what third round prospect of the seahawks gonna reach on it's pretty much a dart throw this year it was jordan brooks now he is an excellent athlete i think this was a better pick than the lj collier pick last year it's a it's a position of more value to me um they are at some point going to need to replace bobby wagner i want to say he's 30 years old at some point that play is going to drop off you could even make a strong case that last year we started to see some decline for Bobby Wagner. So there's some developmental upside there. Pete Carroll obviously likes the guy. The dude is a freak. I compare him to Zach Brown. So if they can hone him in and teach him how to cover more, he could he could work out, but that's the problem. He, he has virtually no coverage instincts at all. Which this team really already ran a ton year. of base defense last year, like 70% of the time. This pick indicates to me that they want to do that again, that they might see Jordan Brooks as a replacement for Michael Kendricks. I think that could be a pretty big problem here for the Seahawks just philosophically 
Um, then they trade up for Daryl Taylor. Now, okay, I mean, the context of the eval of the analysis is pretty good, I would say. I mean, most people agreed it was a reach, and he turned into a good player with good coaching. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, I think they could have gotten him later. Uh, they probably could have gotten him here at 216. Daryl Taylor out of Tennessee. I thought Alton Robinson was better. Those two guys have been pretty much identical for the Seahawks. They just drafted a couple more edge guys. Still could develop and turn into something, but I think that was too early for him, and he definitely has not been that good. I under I know I know Daryl Taylor played better down the stretch last year, but that was always the thing. It was like he's gonna take too long to get there. Um Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe a C. Damian Lewis, love this pick. Dude's a stud. Good analysis on that one. We got uh, Colby Parkinson. Hasn't really gotten a chance to play. Still would like to see some Colby Parkinson. Crowded tight end room there, but yeah, I mean, fourth round pick. Barely played it all. Good jump ball guy. Just kind of an awkward player. That's why, you know, you bring in the new system last year. Not really a good scheme fit for him. Guy that's more of a big slot. Kind of similar to, you know, in some ways to what we said about um, Charlie Kolar this year. He's not as good as Charlie Kolar was, but yeah, I'd still like to see him play somewhere. DJ Dallas was fine. Freddie Swain's made some plays. They're, uh, they tried a project. I thought that was a good process. Yeah, I think the analysis held up pretty well in Seattle. This was, at the end of the day, a pretty underwhelming draft. Just a humble I give it a C-. minus, And... You know, maybe bump that up to like a C or a C plus because Brooks turned out to be a pretty good linebacker for them. It's not like he's some superstar though, right? So, yeah, I think that was put it put the win column, put a, a notch in the win column on that one. Okay, we got two more divisions to do. Tampa Bay Bucks. I mean, looks pretty good so far. Wait, do I even need to cover this? This is spot freaking on. A plus for Worfs, A plus for Winfield. Bang, bang. Keyshawn Vaughn, that was a stupid pick. Didn't think he was all that good. He has not been good. Tyler Johnson is still there as a fifth round pick. Thought, you know, at worst, this guy's going to be a really good wide receiver for. That's played out. Khalil Davis, I forgot they have him. Is he still on the roster? Because he really needed time to develop. Super raw, but freaky athlete coming out of Nebraska. Wouldn't be stunned if we get a little Khalil Davis breakout this year if he's still down there. And I didn't see much in these two guys. So, I mean, seriously, that's like a win plus. We nailed the analysis on that draft from start to finish. Atlanta Falcons. AJ Terrell, okay, I gave it a B plus. I liked AJ Terrell. I think that's fine. He's been better than that, but it's not like anything I need to apologize for. Marlon Davidson still needs to grow here. Um... Big year for him. Had a pick six on Tom Brady. That was pretty cool. Um, interior defensive linemen in general, they just take a lot of time. Big year for him to see if that holds up. Love the Matt Hennessy pick. He's their starting center. That was good. I was I did miss on these two guys. I think I'd, I have some apologizing to do. Michael Walker looks like a good linebacker. And then at least a, you know, a, a third base 4-3 linebacker, which... You know, they've kind of changed their system up a little bit. Not so much the 3-4 anymore, but still, fourth round, he's been fine. Jalen Hawkins has made some plays. He looks like he might be a player for them. So, I give it a B plus. Honestly, I think I think this is fine. I was, I was lower on Jalen Hawkins. Didn't see it. Okay, I missed out a fourth round pick, but said you got a starting center in the third round. I, we'll put this in the in, incomplete middle ground territory. Some people thought AJ Terrell was a little bit early. I liked AJ Terrell, so I'm a big H, AJ Terrell fan now. I won't I won't collect a full win on that one, but I'm not going to accept a loss on that either. Carolina Panthers uh, gave us a B plus. Derek Brown is a C plus. I think is fine. It was a little bit early for him. He's been a good you know kind of guy up front, but hasn't taken that next big step up. Itor Gross, Gross Matos, big year for him with, um, you know, Redick kind of came in and stole his development time. Big year for him. I'm not going to apologize for that quite yet. They haven't really addressed that edge spot. I, th I think they believe in him. A really young athletic guy coming out, developmental player. Sometimes these guys just take two or three years. So we'll wait and see one more year on Gross Matos. Jeremy Chin, B plus, end of the second round. I liked him. 
I think that's fine. I mean, here, awesome rookie season. Second year was so-so, but I mean, B plus, I like the pick, good value. Troy Pride hasn't been able to get on the field for them. Kenny Robinson, XFL superstar. Bravian Roy as a run defender that late was fine. A little bit too late on these late round guys. Roy Pride, Kenny Robinson, Bravian Roy, Stanley Thomas Oliver. Nothing's really come of those dudes. Um, but yeah, probably another incomplete, honestly. A little too high in gross Matos, a little too low on Shin. Not a B plus draft, looking back on it. This is more of a meh. Like if I was grading this now where I'm a little bit harsher on these drafts, probably would be more like a C for them. Okay, New Orleans Saints only had four picks. Gave it a B. Cesar Ruiz, he's been fine. Zach Bond, I thought would be better. I did like Adam Troutman. You had four picks, you get... You know, Ruiz, I think, will be better this year. He's had his hiccups, but that was expected. Young guy coming out of Michigan. Bond, I'm... I think the whole tweener thing, it just, you gotta go to the right system if you're one of these tweeners. I was really banking on him developing his coverage and being the DeMario Davis replacement there. Maybe it still happens, but probably too late for that. And then Troutman, I thought was a good pick late. Didn't get the, the Tommy Stevens pick. I, I think it's another inconclusive, uh, honestly. Uh, or at least, you know, in the middle. I don't think it's a win or a loss. It's, it's tough when there's only four picks here. All right, last one. Indianapolis Colts. I gave them a B plus. Pittman, I did like that pick. Loved Jonathan Taylor. Julian Blackman, loved that. Loved the process on Jacob Eason. Obviously didn't work out. But, I mean, is anyone really criticizing them looking back, like taking a rocket arm dude? No. And then these guys, I liked the gamble on speed for Isaiah Rogers. I did, I believe, say that. Isaiah Rogers, a really quick kind of slot wide receiver that I think could potentially eventually replace uh, the, the slot corner here, uh, Kenny Moore. You know, I, I like Kenny Moore, but maybe eventually he replaces him. I don't know. So Desmond Patton, kind of insurance for Michael Pittman, another big. Yeah, I mean, Rogers been a good pick. No way around. He's he's made some plays. Starting, he's played outside. He can man guys up. Gamble on speed late, man. I should have graded this higher. I nowadays I would have graded this higher. Guy with a lot of athleticism. And uh, yeah, give it a B plus, and I think that's pretty good. You know, maybe even like an A minus without a. I mean, they basically had a first round pick there with Michael Pittman. I don't really see any huge misses here. It's not like I didn't like Isaiah Rogers. Just probably didn't put down a high enough grade there for a six round pick. But I'll I'll say this was good analysis. A win. Loved Julian Blackman, man. Got to get him healthy. Dude's a star in the making if he can stay out there. Okay, Jackson really gave us an A. Woof. 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 This draft sucks. My God. CJ Henderson. Should have stuck my guns a little bit there. Got talked into him. Bought the cheese on that. Good athlete, but, you know, had some questionable tape for sure. That, that was too early. Caleb on Chase on. I still do believe if Caleb on went to an actual organization that can develop a hybrid 3-4 edge backer, he could work out if he ended up in Miami or New England or Baltimore or something like that. Pittsburgh, like, I still think he, he could work out. He's still really young, but God, Jacksonville has done nothing with him. LaVisca, they, they don't use him right. I would love to see him go into a Shanahan-style offense where he can play that Debo role, kind of the quarter. Uh, Falcons fans are mad at me. It's poor Darrell Patterson. Um, Yeah, I mean, second round. He's made some plays, but not an A. Devon Hamilton still coming along. He's fine, but has struggled. Ben Barch has started at guard. Josiah Scott got traded. Shaq Quarterman, fine. Daniel Thomas hasn't seen the field. Colin Johnson made some plays. Hey, I did like Jake Luton. At least that's in there. Jake Luton had some good starts for Jacksonville for a six-round pick. That's pretty good. Tyler Davis is on Green Bay now. This draft sucks, man. You got nothing out of here. You got a backup guard. You got Jake Luton. <laughs> you 
You got third round pick back for CJ Henderson a year later. Woof, dude. This is an F among Fs and an L for me. I was wrong, man. This draft should have been criticized much, much more heavily. Houston Texans, like the, the Ross Blacklock pick, did need time to grow and develop. I think we'll see him have a good year. Jonathan Grenard, that was fine. He's he's definitely been better than I thought, but I didn't have any issues with that pick. Charlie Heck has actually turned into a pretty good player, so I was I kind of missed on him. John Reed, small draft here for Houston. Almost like an incomplete. I give it a B. I I think we'll just we'll put this in the in inconclusive column. I I didn't see everything that John Granard has come turned into, but I'm not going to apologize for that. It's not like I shredded that pick. Okay, Tennessee got an A minus. Isaiah Wilson really would have been hard to see that coming off the field, right? I mean, the dude just didn't care about football. It's not like I love that pick. Christian Fulton, absolutely slam dunk. Thought this was one of the best picks of the draft. And honestly, end of the second round, you got a good man corner that fit their system. Had a really good second year. Absolutely right on that. Uh, Darrington Evans, interesting that he has not really turned into much. Was really explosive at Appal Appalachian State. Thought he was in a good system here, but just they don't like him. I think they do prefer like bigger bruising backs for sure. Um, but yeah, I thought he would be a good third down back. Not exactly sure why I was wrong on him. Little Merchinson's been fine as a fifth round pick. Cole McDonald that late. Why not? Yeah, I think this was good. It, obviously impossible to see the I will Isaiah Wilson thing coming. It's not like I was gl you know glowing about that pick. So I'll put that in the win column. And that's it. I think that's all we got. Let's let's um let's tally this up. We got win column 17, loss eight with seven inconclusives so 17 eight and seven is my record from the 2020 draft i'll take it and i think you know being on the inconclusives you know it is what it is i i, I hope you guys enjoyed the video man i under like when i do these grades i realize i'm gonna be wrong on some players it, it is what it is i think it's a pretty good record of um you know, over 50% being right about what the good drafts were and what the bad drafts were. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get out of here. Video is almost 80 minutes at this point. So please do hit that like button. Really hope you enjoyed. And uh, it's going to be a little while for some content. I recorded this before I left for Boston. So yeah, going to take a little break and get into the deep dive stuff when we get back. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.